Welcome back to another episode of Al's Tabletop. Today, we'll be working on a squad of five Black Templar Space Marines from Games Workshop. Warm black with yellow highlights and red for some of the medals and other details. So let's begin by working on the bases. And for this, we will use some random bits of cork, rock, literally anything that you may have laying around that serves as a bit of texture on the base. Overall, we're going for a ruined battleground type of environment for these bases. So now that we have the overall vignette of the base, let's start pinning them down. Uh, for this, I snip some paper clips and drill a hole on the bottom of the feet of the figure. After I have a general sense of how I want it placed on the terrain, that is, uh, we then drill another set of holes on the actual bits of terrain. and start covering up the rest of the base with this pumice paste. Uh, mixture of PVA with sand works as well. Pre-made products are great, and that's what I'm using here. And I'll have a list of things that I used for this project at the end of the video. For the armor, I used a couple of drops of magenta and yellow azo ink to give the black ink some interesting warm tones and also some scent varnish to help bind the inks into a nice consistency, as well as helping with the overall finish. From a black primer base, we then zenithal prime the figures. I used an airbrush in this case, but you could absolutely use a Ralcan primer. We then take our black and apply liberally all over the armor. We don't have to be neat or worry about getting it onto the other parts of the figure that won't be black because we'll paint over these in later steps anyway. In case you don't have an airbrush or don't want to bother with flannel cans, you could always dry brush lighter grays and then ultimately white over your black prime. Here, we use a gray to start with, then go into white to add extra contrast to the raised surfaces. You absolutely could go crazy on this step. You don't have to worry about being neat. We want the texture and the randomness of the brush stroke that'll add to the overall effect. Thank you. 
And so here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a dry brush versus a airbrush application. We now move on to the other details, like the bones, impurity seals, and this will differ from your models, I'm sure. For the shoulders, a nice red trim. You could use any red you have, but in this case, I used the red by Camara, which is an absolutely gorgeous red. For the metals, I used Vallejo Metal Color Gun Metal. Once we have some or most of the details blocked out around the figure, we can move on to highlighting the armor, giving it more visual interest, yellows to create lines, and dots. I'm using a size 1 brush for this, as I prefer having more control over my brush strokes. I could absolutely use a size 2 or whatever you feel comfortable with. It's really just about trying to create random movements in line, and at the same time highlighting edges of panels. I progressively go higher and higher in value, mixing in more yellow as I go.
and glazing in black and brown with a tiny bit of red in the brown to make the shadows just more interesting, more pronounced. I continue along with the model, taking my time, uh, doing some textures, highlighting, and uh, I'll let the video play out in real time for you. Thank you. 
Now please consider subscribing and hitting the like button if you enjoyed the content. And thank you all so very much. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye now.